It's 5.45 p.m. Where it is for you all out there, uh, which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, uh, and this is 5.45 Live. Let's take a look at what's coming up on deck tonight here. All right, well, we're going to start with a mulch fire in Vernon. Uh, apparently, it's still going. We'll get uh, more of the details on that. We're going to go live to the State House. A couple different things. We're streaming live there. Find out more, and uh, all this cold weather's making the headlines. All that and more, the goal to do it in 15 minutes or maybe even a little bit less so we can all get out there and enjoy the weekend. So if you've got the time, stick with us. sisters, I said, why waste money when we can stay at Motel 6, didn't I, hon? No matter how much the journey changes, you'll know there's a light on at the end of it. Motel 6, 50 years, and the light's still on. Welcome back to this January 25th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden, uh, taking you through a pre-taped edition, which is why we're uh, back up in our uh, 230 Main Street rooftop studio uh, Looking out over downtown, uh, if you're watching this at uh, 5.45 uh, p.m. on BCTV Channel 8, I'll be uh, long gone, headed out on a three-day uh, weekend vacation myself. But uh, thanks for checking in with me at our regularly scheduled time. What were we just looking at? A Motel 6 ad on non-commercial television? No, uh, that's actually footage of Tom Bodet, Demerston uh, resident who uh, had his last day on the scene. Uh, this past week, let's get the script here, courtesy of content specialist uh, and BCTV content manager, Jeff Mastrioni. That's footage of uh, Tom Bodet, Dummerston resident and celebrity select board member who bid farewell after Monday night's meeting. Tom, a former builder, became uh, a writer and featured commentator on NPR's All Things Considered and has written for the New York Times, LA Times, and locally in the Dummerston Views. He's also done voiceover work for Saturday Night Live, National Geographic, uh, Steven Spielberg's uh, Animaniacs, and he's a, a regular panel member on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, which is NPR's game show, and a uh, big-time contributor to the Dummerston Select Board meetings, uh, something that prompted him to joke about uh, a great reduction in length following his departure. Let's take a look. Well, they'll take this from a feature film, the selected shorts one, I, once I'm off. <laughs> You think how quick the meetings will fly now? All right. So if I may, I'd like to move that we uh, we adjourn. I'll second that. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There you go. Uh, a little footage of Tom Bodet. As we uh, got get to hear his voice as the spokesman for Motel 6 uh, during that 1988 ad, courtesy of their throwback uh, YouTube channel. You can catch uh, him on the past Demerston Select Board meetings, which are all available to watch all the way through last year at brattlebrotv.org. Again, I think the, the board and anybody that's been watching those meetings and enjoying them will miss his presence there. All right, we'll move on and talk fire. And for that, uh, let's go back to the close-up here, get the old script in here. Well, if a pile of mulch ablazing uh, may strike residents as less threatening than a five-alarm downtown fire, Sir Sosimo's Vermont Mulch Co. found a, quote, one-time event mulch fire on their uh, Vernon property a bit more newsworthy than first thought as it uh, burned well into its 48th hour, uh, when last we checked, anyway. Something that prompted 545 Live senior news correspondent uh, Joe Bushy to set up shop with a camera to get us some of this uh, footage that we're seeing now. Uh, and this footage actually spanned uh, late into uh, the evening here, as we'll see in just a moment, uh, some uh, long time uh, night footage as well, uh, going through the night as firefighters were called back to the scene. We'll uh, get you updated as best we can uh, as this progresses. In the meantime, uh, let's go back to talking Tom Bodette for a second, somebody uh, who wears as many hats as he does. Uh, often warrants more than one story, and uh, on top of his departure from the Dummerston Select Board, he also happens to sit on uh, a certain panel that I could uh, in no way remember or recite off the top of my head, but that's what we uh, have got the teleprompter and the close-ups for. Let's, uh, let's see if we can even add, yeah, it's the Vegspa. 
uh, or, or, or really the Vermont Energy Generation Siting Policy Commission. Uh, now, that's a commission established by the governor to gauge reactions to potential locations for new state energy projects uh, from local residents across the region. The public forums in our area kicked off Wednesday with a public hearing at the high school that saw 90 minutes of pure, unfiltered public, something that the commission's Jan Eastman says is exactly what the governor's looking for. We've got uh, her introduction uh, to this uh, forum as well. Let's take a look. We've been asked to provide recommendations to the governor and the legislature on best practices for improving the processes surrounding the site of approval of electric generation projects. For our purpose, electric generation project relates to all facilities other than net meter and group net meter facilities. So we're not doing the really small ones, but we're here for sort of everything else. So all electric generation sites. Uh, specific information on the charges of the... All right, uh, that full forum can be viewed uh, at BrattleboroTV.org, and it'll show on next week on BCTV Channel 10. Now, as the smooth segues between stories continue, we get to talk about the governor again, not just in terms of his uh, policy citing commissions, um, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about the budget as well. Let's uh, get... Get that uh, up here on the screen. There we go. A budget backtrack? We'll find out. Uh, let's check out the story. At yesterday's budget, budget address in Montpelier, the governor laid down the hammer telling lawmakers that the time is now to balance the budget through careful spending, uh, though the time is uh, apparently not now for the release of a detailed plan for how Vermont single payer systems uh, implemented and its $1.6 billion price tag will be paid for. And that's after federal legislation set back the state's imminent health care plans, pushing back uh, their January 15th, 2013 deadline for a sp uh, spending plan to, uh, to a sometime soonish deadline. We'll see if they can even make that. Um, that though uh, the governor did point out that uh, small businesses in the state are currently paying $1.9 billion now. Uh, to get health care for themselves and their employees. So we're looking at uh, $1.6 billion to pay for the whole, the whole spiel, the whole thing, whole shebang uh, makes uh, the numbers look a little different for sure. Speaking of uh, the budget address and the State House, our Wyndham District 4 Rep Mike Merwicki is up in Montpelier doing his bit for, uh, for the region. He's got an iPad up there that happens to stream live to the web. Uh, he's been posting video, including video of the governor's budget address. Um, and we're going to give it, give it a test here, see how our stream goes, and get a, a uh, test from Mike to take a look at what's going up on the State House. And I think we're going to get to look at some art that's going on up there as well. Let's see if we can uh, get you in on the split screen, Mike. There we go. Tell us a little bit about this art project. This is part of the art show. This art exhibit is currently being shown in the cafeteria of the State House. Art created in response to Tropical Storm Irene and all the havoc that we across Vermont. Subsequent efforts to rebuild all right, Mike, very good. Uh, a little hard to hear you there. That, that exhibit is in the cafeteria at the State House. Uh, that's a, a art series dedicated to uh, the uh, victims of Tropical Storm Irene and commemorating and celebrating all the hard work uh, as Vermont continues to rebuild. We're going to be using that uh, very method of streaming live from the State House to get more video from Mike Merwicki as he continues his Montpelier Connection interview show. He'll uh, get all the updates from all our local representatives, so look for that on BCTV Channel 10. All right, a few more things to wrap up here on this weekend edition as I get ready to head off and enjoy a three-day weekend. And uh, now just time shifted a few hours later, you can get out there and enjoy the weekend yourselves as well. Let's uh, head back into the newsroom to talk about the next story here, which happens to be, as promised in our coming up section, the cold deep freeze, there you go. You may just have noticed uh, that it's a little cold outside, just a little. So cold, in fact, that state officials and law enforcement have issued multiple extreme cold and wind chill advisories throughout the, the week. Particular, 
points that they uh, are urging. They're urging parents and educators to proceed with caution when bringing children outdoors. The streak, which has seen a boom in local clothing purchases, with reports from retailers across the state of shortages in winter coats, socks, mittens, and hats, uh, items that had seen uh, record lows in sales over the past three years. Now, the temperature trauma has also prompted a media blitz of sorts with networks across uh, New England putting the cold in the spotlight. And uh, we like to sum up uh, all the media we can find on stories here. Let's, uh, let's get the, the go. The extreme cold means more people are looking for a warm place to spend the night. Doctors say frostbite can strike in as little as five minutes. And even for hardy northerners, this bitter cold can be dangerous. Fact is, many of us haven't been shopping for warm socks and jackets in a while. The cold is getting old, but is it going to stay much longer? We'd love to heat up Vermont for you. There's our 545 Live media buzz heating up Vermont for you. Just uh, taking a look at a few of the many stories surrounding the temperature in the region. A few things to wrap up on this weekend edition as we close out our 15 minutes of fame here. And we get to talk a little bit of sports, some big uh, home games and big wins for BUHS. Uh, we'll start with basketball, which uh, shows live. Two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. Uh, now the Colonel's got a, a crushing uh, victory uh, 62 to 35 over Windsor this past week. We've got the video. Here's number 20, Kapuczynski losing the ball, and it's picked up by Batchelder. Quickly ahead, Elliot Nags, ball reversal, top of the key. Patno looks inside, has Riggy. Riggy lays it in. There you go. Uh, that, that's Bill Holiday doing the commentary there. Uh, let's talk hockey for a moment as well as we've got BCTV ED Quartrobridge out there with an HD flip cam uh, to capture some of the footage from uh, the boys home win over People's Academy. That was a, a 3 nothing shutout for them. Here's the face off. We'll be getting more footage, uh, hockey footage. I'll play some full games up on BCTV as well. You can rewatch those basketball games, uh, bo both boys and girls basketball games being broadcast uh, live thanks to all the hard work of the crew at BUHS TV, the high school's morning news advisory program, which makes it an evening uh, advisory program when they uh, head back out to the school to catch those games live. Uh, you can find them all at brettleborotv.org along with all our other live programming and streaming for uh, our video on demand, all local stuff up there. All right, uh, clearly that's enough chit chat and shenanigans for me. I will uh, slow the motor mouth down here a little bit, head out and enjoy the weekend as I hope you will out there as well. Stay warm, uh, get yourself some coats, hats, uh, warm socks and mittens and certainly uh, get your kids some of those as well if they're gonna be outside for an extended period of time. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Roland Boyden saying, thanks everybody. Put me on the um, town meeting day uh, agenda, Lewis. Uh, put it in there and zing in there, Tom Bodin. <laughs> you got that? Oh, we got that. I'll I'm, sure, I'm sure of that. We'll let you handle that.